Well, the Commissioner of Police in Akwaibom State, Andrew Amigame, joins us tonight to get more perspective on this sad development. And uh, we also have uh, David Hundein, who is an investigative reporter. Behind the story about Inyobon, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight in the studio. Okay on the program really they're not here in the studio but of course let's have this conversation david i want to start with you really um david you released a, a, a long expose about this uh, particular case just a few hours ago can you make us understand you know walk us through what you've actually discovered as you got closer to uncovering what really happened to this young lady so um i want to point out that this isn't so much um, about discovering what happened to her, because what, what happened to her is already in the public domain. It's already public knowledge, what happened to uh, Inia Bongomar. What the story was about was to establish two things. First, that the primary suspect, that's uh, Ezekiel Frank Uduak Akpan, who is being treated by the Akwai Bomb State Police Command as the sole suspect, is not in fact the sole suspect, that he has help, that he was working with people, and the, the Akwai Bomb State Police Command, for whatever reason, for reasons best known to themselves, are actively trying to conceal this fact. And that secondly, and perhaps almost as important, that the case that could be constructed uh, for anything other than an individual conviction of Frank Akpai is being intentionally bungled by the Akwai Bomb uh, State uh, Police Command. And this can be proven by the fact that his, uh, his hideout, his lair, where you know several people have been able to gain access to to see the remains of his, his previous victims, their bones, shoes, uniforms, those sorts of things. People have been traipsing through that place freely for the past three or four days, effectively contaminating an active crime scene and rendering all the what would otherwise be uh, very valuable evidence there inadmissible in court. And the Akhari Bomb State Police Command is aware of this and they're letting it happen. So either this is incompetence or this is deliberate that the case that could be built for anything other than simply convicting this 20 year old guy as to take the fall for what is clearly a bigger issue than just him, you know, is being intentionally bungled by the Akwaibom State Police Command. Now, um, some of the, the things that I pointed out specifically in the report were that, first of all, uh, in the immediate aftermath, of uh, the period when he committed the murder, which was on April 29, 2021. One of the first people that he, that he contacted, now I, I was able to get this information because uh, I have an insider at, the tel at a telecoms company who basically leaked this data to me. And by the way, uh, all the data that I have, the Nigeria police force has access to the same data. So you'd have to ask them why, um, even though they have access to this same data, they haven't done anything with it. And they've, and they've been acting as if they don't know everything that I've said, because they had it even before I did. They are the police, they have this data. Now, what the data shows is that in the immediate aftermath of the period when this uh, Frank Afan fellow committed this murder, one of the first people that he uh, contacted on the phone with, with, within 24 hours was a fellow called uh, 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 Kufri Effion. And I was able to validate this by uh, pulling the, uh, the phone number, which I got from the call records, through TrueCaller. Two different numbers were used to, uh, make, to have this communication with, Kuf with Kufri F. Young, and both showed up as belonging to this Kufri F. Young guy. I dug into this guy's past. This guy is a civil servant. He's a senior forest, forest officer at the, minist uh, the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. And uh, the call records were able to place him at a direct street address which was at uh, S9G unit at uh, Ewet Housing Estate in Uyo, which is the site of Davok Suites, which is a very well-known hotel in Uyo. Hotel, which also, by the way, happens to be owned by uh, Akaiti Akpabu, who is uh, Godzilla Akpabu's wife. And Godzilla Akpabu is the minister of Niger Delta Affairs. Now, this fellow contacted this Kufri F. Young guy. Bear in mind, he has just killed a young job seeker. He has just brutally raped and murdered a young job seeker. He goes and contacts this guy for whatever reason. I don't have access okay. to the actual um, call. I don't want to cut you midstream, uh, David, but I would like okay. us to make it easier to understand the story. So let's take a little bit of it uh, with the commissioner of police in, um, in Akwaibom. 
Commissioner, please help us understand. That's an allegation uh, from somebody who has done a little bit of investigation of this on this matter. How true is it that the police seem to have allowed the uh, the contamination of an incident, a crime incident uh, place like that. What happened? Can you help us understand what happened? I will say good evening, viewers. I hope you are hearing me. Are you hearing me? You are hearing me? Very clear. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, it's most unfortunate that um, meanings and different stories are being read into what happened. Uh, we got the information in the morning of 30th, that they were looking for a, uh, a nearborn Umore. And um, we did our best. We traced and traced till somebody from, uh, a gentleman from the social media came up and assisted with pictures and whatever, and we were able to get at the root cause and the, the father of uh, Akpan. At the end of the day, Akpan ran out of uh, Uyo, was said to have gone far into, uh, as far as even Calabar, before he managed to convince him to come back because he kept denying that he knew nothing. At the end, uh, at the end of interrogation and questioning, he confessed to what he did, and policemen went straight to the scene of crime and were able to exhume the body. Akpan uh, and his father, who got to know of this thing later, are still being interrogated as we speak. Uh, there is no reason why anybody or any police officer will cover murder. All right. You know, Mr. I, Commissioner, I, I, there's so much for us to look at, uh, looking at, you know, some of the accusations that have been laid, uh, laid against the police, uh, especially looking at others that were involved. But we'll come back to you. Just hold your thoughts. But now let's head for this quick break. When we return, Newslight continues, of course, with the Commissioner as well as uh, David Hunde. So we still have the Commissioner of Police in Nakwaibom State, Andrew Amiengeme, with us and um, David Uday. But let's go back to the Honorable Com uh, the Commissioner of Police. Uh, please help us understand, in terms of contamination of the scene of incident, help us understand what happened. You're telling us a story. Yes, uh, I was trying to explain. This case started as a case of suspected kidnap. And... It was after the arrest of uh, uh, Frank Appen and his confession that we were able to know that there's gone beyond kidnap to murder. Uh, uh, men of anti-kidnapping took him out after after the, after questioning and interrogation. He confirmed that he killed the lady and went to show them the scene. And immediately we called the homicide department to come in. And homicide department came in. They dug. They dug the. They they brought. They were able to assume the body and uh, they, 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 deposited, they, they deposited it in the, at the mortuary. Um, immediately, the case changed from uh, uh, kidnapping to murder. We are open to every available information that we can get. We want to appreciate members of the, members, uh, members of the ICT who have been assisting and the social media, but they are blowing it too far. Whatever information they have, they should let us have it investigation is ongoing it's not yet concluded though the autopsy report is already out uh we we are open to all information that is credible uh, the police has never and will never in any way condone and cover any person for murder i am a father she's uh, she's not older than any of my my daughters and i cannot condone such a thing for anybody who's right. to infer. Well, Mr. Commissioner, uh, permit me to come in here real quick. But you're not answering the question. The question was, David Hunde, who did an investigative piece, says the scene of the crime has been desecrated because everyone has been going in there, thereby destroying evidence. What are you doing to, you know, keep that scene sacred? One. And two, even in that investigative piece, he actually said that this goes beyond Mr. Frank Akpan, that a lot of you know, prominent Nigerians have been fingered. Can you tell us beyond Akpan, how many other arrests have been made in connection to the death of this young lady? As at the moment, as at the moment uh, um, Frank Akpan is in detention and the father, who got to know even before he ran away, and never told the police. I can confirm that to you. The scene of crime was protected. 
But the youths, the rampaging youths of that community, mm. out of anger of what they saw uh, Frank, do, uh, what he did, they went and ransacked the place. That is exactly what happened. They went mm. in, in their large numbers to ransack the place, and um, it's most unfortunate. But already the detective has swept through that place before that happened. Commissioner, you. okay, you said that the youths ransack. Does it mean they overpowered the police and the policemen could not keep them at bay? And having said that, if other bodies are found in that place with boots and shoes and clothes of other youth coppers that seem to have been buried in shallow graves in that same location, does it mean that this young man has done more than one particular murder of a girl called Inyobong Umoren? Is that the case? No, no, that's not the case. That is not correct. That but other bodies have been found. No other bodies have been found, and no other, no, 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 no other bodies have been found in that place. Not at all. That's all, right. all right, you know what, Mr. Commissioner, we'll come back to you, David Hunde. He has been listening to the commissioner really react to all that he is alleging. Uh, David, you've heard him. He says. A lot of things that you've said is not true and your piece might have some information not absolutely correct. Can you react to it? I mean, you could almost see his nose growing while he was talking because when someone is lying through their teeth, you can see the physical effect that he has on them. He said, uh, you know, David, that David, you don't, have to, insult, you don't have to insult, you don't have to insult him in any form here. Bones were discovered on site. Right? How did those bones. get to social media? Did people make those things up? There is With evidence. Bones were not found TV anywhere. Live on national TV to deny that there is evidence. Why is a police officer on national TV denying that there is evidence of a crime that has taken place? That there is evidence of several crimes that have taken place. Did the rampaging youths make up these things? Did they tell lies about these things? Where are the bones? Where are the bones? There are no bones there. It's an uncompleted building. There are no bones there. They saw some slippers and some uh, lady, uh, some one or two uh, shoes. Does that mean that uh, those are bones? Bones were never found there. Them. And I, I, if, I guess if you have, if, if if you have information shoes, to that, if, they just got there. Right? If you have and information, you are a police you, officer. People, people right? were living in, people were living in that. That they saw some shoes. Okay. Um, Commissioner, uh, Mr. Amegaman, uh, let's let's try and understand what happened. You are. Uh, you're stating that as far as the police are concerned, there are no bones, there are no bodies, but the boots and the outfits that were found, they're all over social media. Were they created by somebody else's imagination or were they found there when the police went to that site? Did you find anything I, um, on towards there, I'm, apart from I'm, I'm, the shallow grave of uh, Miss Moran? It was only the shallow grave and all those shoes and whatever it's a family compound. People have been living there. You don't of expect course. that they will not find one or two things of in course. the place. But I, 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 I challenge David to show us even one single boat that's, that was seen there. Even I watched on BBC when somebody was showing the whole scene and recording it, nothing like any bone anywhere. Mr. Commissioner, thank you for joining us. And of course, David, with 30 seconds before we wrap up, are you worried that justice might not be served in this case? Or are you confident, David Undei, that this lady who's lost her life at her prime will get justice at the end of the day? In 30 seconds as we wrap up. Well, clearly, based on the, the appearance of the police officer that we have seen here, the Akwai Bond Police Command has taken a side. And that side is not the side of justice. They have decided to tell lies. And they have decided that that is the hill to die on. He, I, met, I, I noticed he mentioned nothing about uh, SB Samuel Ezeugo, who, as I mentioned in my article, has been having uh, telephone contact with the main suspect before the suspect was arrested, the day after the suspect committed the murder. How did that happen? Okay. He has offered no explanation. Hmm. David, because we have to close. Yes, well, David, because yeah. we have to close, uh, we have to wrap you up. Uh, we've got to give a chance to the Commissioner of Police as well to have a final word. So in terms of the person that he fingered as well, who's a police officer, what do you say about that? Was there a police officer that was in contact with uh, Mr. Akwan? 
Yes, as at the time they got uh, Arpan, uh, Frank Arpan, they had to lure him back. That was when he made those calls, and they, they mm -hmm. lure him back with his cousin to come back so that they can, they can come and explain what happened. That was far before even he started confessing. So the, the officer he's calling is one of those who convinced uh, Frank Arpan to come back. And he's now mentioning as if the officer was con con colluded or conspired with him. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Tonight, of course, we continue to keep an eye out for this story to ensure that justice is served for Lady Inyoko.